Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. So uh, just uh, let's give it a minute or two for others to join. Okay, so we will get started. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to APNG, Asia Pacific Next Generations webinar. Our webinar series uh, is about, uh, uh, is an arena in which uh, future leaders of the digital society in the Asia Pacific region gather to build a human network and learn from each other. We have uh, been organizing webinars since 2020. We had a successful year of uh, 2020 and 2021 webinars where our esteemed and expert speakers spoke on a range of topics on emerging technologies from research and practice on blockchains to artificial intelligence. Asia Pacific Next Generation organizes webinars on the third Saturdays of the even months of the calendar year. And we usually have a one hour webinar that starts at 12 p.m. UTC Japan time. Uh, today, we are uh, honored to have uh, Professor Anand Nair from uh, Dayton University in Vietnam uh, speaking to us. And he is going to speak about uh, mobile edge computing. And uh, what he's going to look at is uh, mobile edge computing, architectures, applications, and challenges. Professionally, I have known Professor Anand Nair for a while, and uh, we have uh, been keynote speakers at a few conferences together. And what he's going to look at is uh, multi access edge computing architecture that enables cloud computing capabilities in an IT service environment. Basically with mobile edge computing, we are trying to push the services, applications and usage at the edge of the network rather than the cloud because the cloud still creates latency problem, connection problems, and it still uh, causes uh, many security issues and many uh, delays in terms of connectivity. So what happens with mobile edge computing is we are trying to push everything towards the edge of the network and process and uh, yeah, uh, do computations uh, near to the mobile users devices. And as more and more of us use uh, mobile devices for our daily computing needs, what we are doing is seeking more and more uh, infrastructure and architectures based on mobile edge computing. So before I hand over to our esteemed speaker, Professor Anand Nair, what I would like to do is uh, briefly introduce him. 
Dr. Anand Nair received a PhD in computer science in the area of wireless sensor networks and swarm intelligence. He's currently working in the School of Computer Science, Dayton University in Da Nang, Central Vietnam as an assistant professor. He is also a renowned scientist, vice chairman of research and director of in Internet of Things and Intelligent Systems Lab at the university. He has a very impressive resume. Uh, he is a certified professional with 75 plus professional certificates from Cisco, Microsoft, Oracle, Google, and many others. He has published more than 125 plus research papers in high quality journals indexed by Scopus and Web of Science. And um, his uh, uh, capability is recognized in his innovations and research, his research and development. He has 11 Australian patents, seven Indian patents, two Canadian copyrights, and three German patents to his credit in the area of wireless communications, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, internet of things, and image processing. So we are indeed honored to have uh, such a prestigious speaker uh, address us and share his knowledge. Over to you, Professor Nair. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sam, for such an elaborative introduction, really impressive. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Anand Nair, and I'm working as Assistant Professor, Scientist, Vice Chairman Research, and Director for IoT and Intelligent Systems Lab in School of Computer Science, Dutan University, Da Nang, Vietnam. Before I start with my presentation, I would like to give a heartly thanks to APNG Association, wonderful work they are doing in terms of collaborating with researchers and connecting them to the whole world so that the people can become aware of the latest research topics and they can perform research, they can solve problems, and of course, come up with some innovation solutions. So considering the, the prospects of webinars, today I will be speaking on the most widened topic that is not going to capture the future, but actually the mankind will be utilizing it as today we use our smartphones and artificial intelligence and smart homes. Ladies and gentlemen, today we need to bridge up our bells of research in the area for mobile edge computing. And in our lab, we are doing lots of research in terms of IoT, especially because you all know that IoT is actually a comprehensive plethora of options that give us towards big data, AI sensors, optimization techniques, many, many things. So similarly in cloud computing, even though I'm a cloud practitioner certified with Amazon, even I'm a AWS certified, I'm a Azure certified, but we need to think that still there are lots of things that can even raise the capability of cloud, not only for developers, not only for the common man, but also for the mobile users. Because today, if you talk of internet traffic, you will be stunned that 80% of the traffic today is coming from handheld devices, like mobile phones, iPads, tablets. And of course, in the near future, we can even see that the traffic will be coming more with wearable devices. And of course, because when we talk of connectivity, the latency throughput, and of course the delivery ratio becomes a huge problems. Because in a small area, when number of users are less, the connectivity will be better. But when you increase the number of users, when you talk of autonomous vehicles, these things with the range of connectivity, we require lots of requirements. At one time, 4G was enough. Today in Da Nang City, we already started with 5G. Mobi phone and v uh, at VTEL are giving, <coughs> sorry, for 5G services. But still you can see some countries like China, USA with AT&T, and of course, Taiwan and South Korea, they are doing their research with 6G. Even Samsung and Nokia are contributing a lot in 6G. But of course, if we really want to talk of the real time traffic indulgence in the real world, when we talk of smart cities, industry 5.0, when we talk of autonomous vehicles, robotics, the things in towards of the demanding requirements, the requirements are really, really becoming cumbersome. The requirements are really huge, especially when we talk of quality of service. 
So ladies and gentlemen, today I will be giving you a detailed lecture. What is exactly the meaning of mobile edge computing? Why it is important? What is the architectures, the challenges, how the mobile edge computing is going to indulge into the future cellular communication network, which actually the most important network of ours, because today when we click a photo, we immediately go to Instagram and Facebook. When we click any video, we need to go on YouTube. When we are going for real time matches and sports and some events, we need to go online. So these things require a huge massive amount of connectivity. And ladies and gentlemen, in order to suffice the number of population and the number of mobile users that we expect to even become eight times more by year 2030 with more applications and cloud driven resources, we need to think of something new. And new means new technology, new uh, significance of improvements that is known as mobile edge computing. So my lecture for today will be in three aspects. The first of all, we will be having our lecture with regard to the foundations of mobile edge computing, because I don't make any boring slides like of any theory and other things. I will be more towards orienting towards practical things. And after that, we will be having more towards our mobile edge computing in uh, cellular communications. And then I will be discussing some real time applications and some research issues that you can do and you can find some problems and you can solve it. And of course, you are most welcome to take my help. You are most welcome to ask the questions. We are all ready to collaborate. And of course, I will be there to support you all. So let me share my screen, first of all, to start the presentations. So I hope you all can see the slide right now, though we will be starting with mobile edge computing. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, believe me, this is going to be the future. Okay, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the lecture. And of course, if there is any question, don't hesitate to put it on the chat box. And believe me, I, I will not uh, go off the webinar, go off the grid, unless all the solutions will be given to you and all the queries are resolved. So put up all your questions which are in your heart and brain on the chat box. I will be coming to them at the end of the lecture. So first of all, let us study why exactly we need to have the mobile edge computing in the future why it is becoming a most important buzzword. The first thing is that we all know that today we don't use computers much. We are using our mobile phones. Even I have my friends who are doing crypto mining, even using iPhones. We are all on IoT. We have everything on apps. Even let me tell you that you will all agree with me that if you are doing social media, you are typing some emails, you are watching YouTube, you are doing some uh, chatting with your friends, everything is possible with your mobile phones rather than to on your laptops. And of course it is portable, it is mobile, and we are having the connectivity with 3G and 4G all across the globe. And uh, we need to not open the computers. And of course, everything in the future will be wearing with the variable devices. So you can see that the growth in mobile traffic by smart devices, HD videos, streaming, IoT, business processes, it is plethora. Even today, if I'm connecting a smart TV, I'm living in a smart home, even my smart TV is giving some traffic on the internet. If I'm playing a game on PlayStation 4 with live, uh, with live uh, gaming on Sony and I'm streaming it, even I'm using the mobile phones, uh, the internet. Of course, when we go on our uh, on our on our uh, traveling and we are I'm walking on the beach and I'm listening to live music on Spotify. I'm streaming some live 4K video on Netflix. We require tremendous amount of bandwidth. So the demand for the end users is becoming a huge challenge because we need to suffice. Suppose you are in a stadium and a football match is going on and you are live on Instagram. Some is posting the live video on YouTube. You are even clicking the photos and uploading on Facebook. Some people are even checking the emails. Imagine in that area, how much mobile phones can be active and how much requirement is there. So the demand for businesses for enhanced and secure interaction for customers, it's increasing. But we need security. Of course, we need privacy also. So these enablement of connectivity with sensors, media and other devices is the prime requirement. Today, I just want that if I want to make a smart home, I just bring my Google home, I bring the Siri, and I just install some apps, I connect it to my Wi-Fi, and I'm done. And it is possible today. But have you ever imagined how much tremendous amount of internet bandwidth is required? 
you will not get it because today we all have the bandwidth in a proper manner, but in the future, we need it more mobile. So the most important thing towards mobile edge computing is the convergence of information technology and telecommunication networking. They are going to merge together. Of course, they are merged together already, but in the future, they will be one term. So IT and telecom, they will be combined together and they are working comprehensively for the end users. So mobile edge computing is basically an environment where it is actually driven with innovation and values. Of course, everybody you can see from the slide, I can say that, that you can see that it offers application and content providers with cloud computing and of course, IT services. It is creating the value. Of course, you can see that if you talk of the mobile internet today, we have the apps, we have big data, we have sensors, we have data science. Of course, we have the customers. And all this is connected with backend of devices and it is connecting to the cloud. Today, believe me, um, uh, even when I'm going to some company-based projects of cloud computing, they don't want to buy any data center. They want that if the app goes online and they are putting up in the Play Store, they want that connectivity should be automatically scaled with Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services and Azure is giving you the huge platform that even a small company can launch a big uh, application without worry for any resources and anything. So the application and the environments, they are becoming really, really complex and the requirements are becoming eight times more. And they're characterized with proximity, with ultra low latency, high bandwidth, location awareness, and of course, real time access. Now imagine if I think of the smart city, when we talk of autonomous vehicles, now in that autonomous vehicles, there is no brake, there is no uh, steering wheel. We just have to lift in the car and the car will start working. They will just interact with you like a special, like a human machine interaction. And the sensors, the cars, AI onboard computers, and they will be all linked on cloud computing. Only then the car will be able to take you from your source point to the destination point. And all this requires massive connectivity. So why mobile edge computing is becoming so much important, you can see that we require an unparalleled quality of service. I want that I'm, I'm having an iPhone and I'm giving money to the Mobifone or Vtel in Vietnam. And I want that I have taken Netflix subscription. I'm taking Spotify. I'm on, the, I'm on the workout of gym. I don't want to store songs. I want it on Spotify. If I'm on the beach, I'm relaxing. If I'm on a coffee shop, I just enjoy the coffee. I open the Netflix and I enjoy a 4K stream of the video without any problems. Of course, we need to contextualize the service. We need to tailor the requirements and the needs. Of course, there is efficient utilization of radio and network resources, very important. And we require lots of new applications and services that will be coming in the near future. Now imagine if today you have like email services, social media services, we have the streaming services, but imagine when we all have the live gaming services, like gaming on the cloud. No doubt uh, Stadia has failed, but still we have a huge hope of PSNs. We hope that maybe Facebook can give us better platform in metaverse. So imagine when everything becomes on the mobile phones and we want it everywhere. So for that reasons, we need the mobile edge computing. We need plethora of services. We need plethora of efficient resources that can work for the human, uh, that can work for the end users and they can provide the best unparalleled quality of service and experience. So mobile edge computing, it is having unlimited amount of benefits. If, I want, if, I, if you want me to talk on benefits, I can even talk for a whole day, but I will be taking some of the benefits which is actually important for you to understand. Rest, you can do your research and you can download some papers on Scholar or IEEE. You can find many things over there. So basically it is creating a value. Now at one time you can see that even I have done a, uh, you can say research that why the people are using the mobile phones. And you will be stunned that people have said that for calling it is like a seventh or eighth priority. Number one is their email, the social media. Number two is towards their YouTube and other live streaming services. So it has become actually a multimedia powerhouse. And of course, in the future, we need to have more services like metaverse, augmented reality coming to our smartphones. And of course, operators need to think beyond. 
So don't think that 4G or 5G antennas will be enough for us. We need better quality services. What we vision as a scientist is that, that rather than to have the radio waves in the future, we will have the laser technology. And even femto cells, we can even talk of new technology that will be giving the shape that how the communication network can be given better quality of service. And of course, the market segments are increasing like anything. So for the businesses, it is always an opportunity. It is an opportunity and it will be an opportunity where they keep up this, uh, you can say the services, the infrastructure updated to gather more resources and provide better services to the end users. So in the terms of service scenarios, you can see that we have the consumer oriented services, internet of things, of course, we all talk of uh, autonomous industries. We all know due to pandemic, lots of industries were shut down. But when we talk of the future, if there is COVID situation in the near future, we will not have to shut down the industries. We can command the industries with robotics that can be uh, autonomously controlled with just a tablet and an app with just connectivity services that is provided with mobile edge computing services, the MECs. Operator services, the third party services, and of course, network performance. Now, if you talk of these categories, you will be agreeing with me that uh, the mobile scenario that was seen in seven years back is not the scenario that we see today. And that will not be the scenario that we will see in 2027 or maybe 2030 because uh, new things are coming up, new requirements are coming up. People are always staying connected and believe me, uh, it is going to see the new paradigm shift in next three years. So as new services have to come, the infrastructure from the mobile operators, they need to change, they need to update. And that's the reason if you want a proper connectivity with better quality of service, I'm talking of a city which is properly connected, having complete autonomous revolution, then you can't depend on today's 4G and 5G. You have to go towards mobile edge computing. I'm going by research in drones and believe me that today, if you talk of DJI, when we talk of the drones that are helping the farmers to lift up the huge amount of load, they are helping the industries like gas industries to do their continuous monitoring, autonomous monitoring. And of course, if you talk of the sports-based events that will be covered by drones, they don't need your simple RF technology or Wi-Fi technology, it is not they have to come on edge computing. So today, if you talk of the high-end drones, they are actually using edge computing. But in the near future, when we talk of complete autonomous revolution, suppose military wants to go for remote monitoring of the borders, they want to have some remote sensing of particular locations and other things, they need to work with mobile edge computing oriented drone technology. So network performance service scenarios, you can see that this is one of the best areas that you need to do your research, that is the RAN. So RAN is called radio analytics applications. And of course, this is a content optimization. You can see that we have the mobile phone, which is connected to the antenna. Now antenna could be 4G or 5G. And of course, at the back end, we have the mobile edge computing server. And over there, there is an analytical app, which is giving a proper guidance and they're connected to the high end streaming servers. Now imagine everybody that whole of the world is streaming Netflix. Suppose that you all know about Squid Games. Squid Game is basically a Korean movie, but now it is becoming number top three in the whole world. Now whole people are, are watching Squid Games and they're watching seamlessly on their iPads or mobile phones or even their computers. Now imagine how much Netflix is getting the uh, bandwidth or, or the requirements over there. Now that is the main thing that you need to come up with how the video servers and the estimation of the throughput that can be available at the radio downlink interface. And that's the reason everybody that today we are all streaming 4K because of these antennas. So the information is used to assist the TCP congestion control decisions. And of course, if we improve the estimation capacity, we are actually moving ahead of cognitive radio ad hoc networks with RANs and with mobile edge computing as the middleware between you 
and the antennas uh, and between the streaming services you can see over here that here is you the end user here are the antennas that are being used to communicate the network connectivity for you and in between these servers whether you are using some torrents whether you are using some uh, uh, streaming services youtube or anything or even you're doing gaming online okay so this thing is actually making up the core level how the tcps can be improved and this will actually improve your throughput so imagine there was a time when I used to stream the YouTube, but it was only with 480p. But now today at my home, I don't watch YouTube. Most of the YouTube that I watch the songs or the videos, it is on 4K with 2160p. And believe me, when I stream over there, I just get only one second of interruption and the video gets streamed easily. And this is all because that the network performance is improving. But I want this type of performance everywhere when I go in the city and it becomes better and better with proper accelerations. So this is the cons consumer oriented service scenarios that is called augmented reality. Now we all know that when the Apple has launched the Mac Pros and they have just put up the Mac Pro based uh, shell over there and they use the camera to open up all what was there in the graphics card, the RAM, the processor. So over there, we can all use the augmented reality. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it goes without saying that if you talk of metaverse today or the high end things, when we, when we combine metaverse with the blockchains, with intelligent sensors and IoT with smart connectivity, like a full stack technology development, it is not possible without MECs. So that's the reason we have high bandwidth and we have the low latency. So that's the reason that we are preferring MEC with a combination of 5G and 6G. That is actually going to be the present and the future technology till 2031. But we all know that quantum computers are coming because this type of managing of computing is not easy. It becomes really complex. So that's the reason we are waiting for quantum computers to enter the market. And we are putting up all the quantum computers as the central brain like uh, today, NVIDIA is launching up all types of things like H1000 based computers for data centers. This is all based on mobile edge computing. So IoT scenarios, I can discuss IoT for whole day because I'm working on this. So imagine if you are in Singapore, or of course you are in Vietnam, you are monitoring all the license plates of the cars as a traffic monitoring. It can be even giving live intelligent video analytics feed. So in China, you can see that, that they are putting up the motion sensor cameras and they are getting up the live feeds. Even they can see whether the person is happy or sad, where the person is coming from, where the person is going up. So all this thing is actually using lots of AI techniques and it requires lots of bandwidth between the real time scenarios and to take the decisions. So that is what we can see that this could be the new revolution with the autonomous vehicles also that will not be possible without MECs. And of course, I have already talking about the autonomous vehicles. You all know vehicle to vehicle infrastructure. And of course, we are in the level three based automation. But when we talk of level four, when most of the critical decisions will be done by the car and moving towards level five, when the whole decisions will be done by the car and the AI brains with sensors, radar and leaders, you can see that uh, we require massive connectivity across whole of the roads. Now, if I'm talking of a road, it means whole of the world needs to be connected with the same bandwidth, same quality. Otherwise, if you are not getting connected, the car will not be able to stop. Even that's the reason today why autonomous vehicles face accidents, because at that time there is no proper connectivity for them. And believe me, I don't say that the accidents are made with the AI based or any corrections or other things. It is actually 60% could be like a connectivity problem. 40% could be the improvements of algorithms that are actually improving as we have seen in 2014 or 2016 with latest things like YOLO or even with the expl explainable AI that, that is actually a miracle for data science today. So mobile edge computing is basically the natural development. So what is exactly M MEC? I'm going to tell you. So let me tell you that if you really want to start the MEC computing or research, you have to start with 5G. Don't mix up with 4G. 4G is not having that capability, but 5G is having AI capability. And MEC starts with AI and it ends at the high end grid infrastructures. So that's the reason we are combining the IT with AI and we are adding up telecommunication networking. 
That's the reason we will change and revolutionize existing telecom technologies with the power of artificial intelligence. So MEC is a natural development. And of course, it is a convergence of IT and telecommunication networking. And of course, in that, there is one more technology. Even I'm soon, I'm lucky enough that I'm launching this book next month that is on software defined networking. So keep an eye on that. So it will be putting up more towards your network functions, virtualizations, and of course, the SDNs. And believe me, it is recognized by 5G Triple P as one of the key systems. And that's the reason if you really want to drive MEC in the real time, it can be only started with 5G. Now, if you have 5G, like in Da Nang City, we have 5G. In India, we have already 5G. In China, Korea, we have 5G. Now it is a time that with 5G and the existing connectivity things like IoT and IOE, you are ready to implement in the real time. And that's the reason in the last two years, we have seen rapid improvements of cobotics and industry 5.0 and the power of, uh, you can say, smart factories that are actually adapting technologies like MEP. Now they want that automation process should be there. And without automation process, even ISO will not give you the proper certification today. So keep on improving it. So this is a technology that is enabling with the transformation of 5G. And these are some of the use cases that you can see. That is the broadband everywhere. And we are talking of 50 plus Mbps, but in the near future, we can even talk of six to 10 Gbps. But maybe if we are lucky with quantum computers, we can even perform that when the ordinary man can use a one terabytes per second connection by 2034. So it will st still take 12 more years to get a terabytes per second to your home, but it will be there. So we have the pervasive videos. We all know about 4Ks and uh, YouTube and Netflix. You can do that. High-speed bullet trains, autonomous, sensor communication network, natural disaster, drone services, e-health services, especially with medical technologies. And I have a dream because I'm doing my lots of research on IoT, medical technologies with AI. I want that right from the start of interacting with the robot, with robotic process automation, I want to automate everything in the hospital in which doctors will be also putting up the whole, will be putting up a huge contribution, but most of the disease will be taken by the machines. From uh, patient introduction, to patient understanding, to pre-medical treatment, and of course with robotic surgeries and patient monitoring. So everything can be done. We will have one day a complete autonomous hospitals. We will have, but it doesn't mean that doctors will not be there. Doctors will be there, but they will be as a secondary hand, or I can say the joint hand with man and machines in the hospitals. So MEC is basically is producing, is upcoming. And that's the reason ISG MEC, it is an association like ISO, IEEE, it is producing the technical specifications. It is, of course, it is uh, coming up with some more concepts, the specifications, some POC frameworks. And right now you can open that website. You can see that uh, they have come up with lots of standards. They have come up with lots of innovations. And still, if you have up some architecture, even uh, next month, I'm giving up one architecture that how we can see MECs with AR, and of course, with 5G for remote healthcare monitoring, how MEC can be useful for that. It is a going revolution. And soon that paper will be published in FGCS, Elsevier with 8.7 impact factor. So the conclusion is that it is going to complement the SDN and NFV. It is giving us to provide the highly efficient network operations, ultimate personal experience, new business opportunities, and of course, the design and development standards still are under design and development. And of course, things are pushing up and moving in the right direction. And we can still coming up with the drones by next year, or I can say this year itself. And of course, uh, the flying cars, it is in front of you. They are also using mobile edge computing, autonomous vehicles, EV vehicles, they are all coming up like anything. So the most important use case, you can even consider that how you can design your own industry 4.0 with mobile edge computing that can solve autonomous pro uh, automation problem in production standards. That is the most important use case that you can do and do your research. So with this, everybody, I'm completing with my presentation number one. So I will return to this presentation after I complete this presentation number two, okay? 
so you most so you are most welcome to ask the questions on the chat box keep on asking the questions i will be coming up all the questions after i complete this presentation and the next presentation okay so now we will be talking of mobile edge computing in cellular network as i have already told you in the last presentation that uh, you are the end user you are having your iphones and ipads in your hands and you are connecting with 4g or 5g and that 5g is actually giving you the bridge to connect to your email servers your streaming servers you are connecting to your gaming servers the netflix servers the spotify music servers but in order to optimize their requirements but in order to have better uh, you can say uh, efficiency in loading the speeds and of course with the reduction of the latency when you move in high speed bullet trains you go to the remote areas of the city you are getting no problems in connectivity okay even i have the dream i want to see the whole planet when every person on the whole world is getting access to amazon this alibaba youtube netflix now imagine if whole world is connected how much bigger data that we can produce in one minute that will be unimaginable even i can say that we need to add up more uh, you can say Uh, advanced standards of quantum computers to manage the whole planet because in one minute the data will be generated that we have not even generated from the last two thousand years, and even in last year we have generated so much of data that we have not generated in last five thousand years, and that's the reason data science and data analytics they are actually booming up the sector like anything. so in this we will be seeing up the evolution of mobile edge computing what is exactly known as cloud computing the cloudlets the fog computing and after that we have come up with mobile edge computing but in the near future when we talk of the more advanced standards which i will be telling you when we go towards presentation 3 we see multi access edge computing which is actually phenomenal and of course of course everybody uh, when uh, some people used to say me when i used to download a movie on torrents even today i download movies on torrents i will be very open for all of you so i have to wait for at least uh, 45 minutes to 1 hour 30 minutes depending on the cedars and leeches you know about it and of course uh, it takes about this much of time even if i want to download a 4k movie or of course if the cedars and peers leeches are good and uh, i'm downloading that movie on my macbook or on my computer windows machine like surface machine uh it is okay but i see the future when i download the torrent and in just 3 minutes i can download 8 gb now imagine in one day how much 4k movies i can download and how much in one month and how much in six months and things goes and goes this can be automatically possible with multi edge access computing and of course i see this area as a very good area for mankind when we talk of remote connectivity remote health cares and of course uh, that we talk of uh, like uh, uh you can take one example of uh, like uh, agriculture monitoring like all those things so over there these things are really going to boom like anything so what is edge computing everybody i am going to give you a very detailed because you already know the foundation now we will come towards more detailed the intermediate discussion regarding its intro applications challenges and of course its architectures okay so the most important thing that you need to understand that edge computing is different edge computing is basically keeping all the services on the edge okay so don't confuse edge computing with mobile edge computing okay so basically what is edge computing it is actually setting up on cloud computing but when we talk of mobile edge computing i am only focusing on mobiles when we are talking of everything that we need to extend the capabilities of edge computing on the mobile communication network so don't confuse edge computing with mobile edge computing it's not the same but yes they are actually the same in terms of terminologies the architectures and working but edge computing we talk in cloud computing data centers but mobile edge computing is basically when we are talking towards mobile networks when we implement edge computing in mobile networks when you combine the it that is it means the edge computing and mobile services like 5g when you combine together it actually makes up mobile edge computing so mobile edge computing you can see that very simple definition the it which is known as edge computing 
and mobile services, which we talk as 5G. So that's why I'm telling you that mobile edge computing can only be powered up when you are not using 4G or 3G, only 5G. That's the reason we still have to wait for this year or next year to make it rapidly adaptable. And of course, coming to the real time. So IT means edge and real and the mobile computing means 5G and you combine together, it actually makes up mobile edge computing. And that's why we characterize it with proximity, low latency, ultra low. I'm saying you ultra low. I don't say that if I'm using mobile edge computing based services from any mobile operator, I don't see that uh, if I'm even streaming a, you, uh, you can say in YouTube, I'm streaming 8K video, 8K, I'm saying you. Even if I'm streaming Netflix with 8K, I'm uploading a video on the drone live from the drone to the YouTube, we have any problem with the latency. I don't see that. So of course, it gives us the more power towards real-time network, radio network that you can see. Radio network means 5G or 4G network that you can see. So basically, what is the prime goal of edge computing? Reduce the network congestion, improve the performance, and of course, because the number of users, because population is increasing. Of course, it is increasing. Today, at one time, mobile phones were used by some people and they used to make some calls and SMS or MMS. But nowadays, the school going kids are even on Facebook. They need to play games. They need to share. They need to email. They need to watch videos. They need to play online. Everything. They want to be connected. Okay, we all know about Instagram. So that's the reason we need to improve the the optimization, we need to have no congestion. We need to provide better mobile services to large number of users in a small area. So that's the reason if I'm living in an area where there are 5,000 people living and some people are on Instagram, some is streaming, some is uh, putting live video, I'm using drone. And of course I'm streaming with 8K, I'm watching Netflix on my iPad. I don't find any problems. And believe me, every, everybody at one time I have seen uh, when there was MTEL and when there was Satyam in India, I used to open yahoo.com and my email. I used to struggle for 10 minutes just to open my inbox. But today on my iPad, I'm watching Netflix. My MacBook is downloading my torrents. My smart TV is actually streaming the live uh, games with my PlayStation network. And believe me, I have no congestion problem. So imagine the day of internet at that time and imagine the day of today and imagine the day of tomorrow, how much we can change with mobile edge computing. And of course, I've already told you that when the internet grows, when more and more people have got the access to the internet, so the requirements will become massive. And we all know mobile phones are like uh, remote devices, nodes of the internet, which are actually using tremendous traffic power and network power. So the characteristics will be proximity. So today you imagine if you do ping or trace at google.com, how much hops you need. Minimum to minimum eight to 10 hops. But in terms of proximity of mobile edge computing, I just need two hops. Now imagine how much fast it is. Location awareness, high throughput, one to 10, but I've already told you that it is under the research mode and uh, with 10 to 100 Gbps, it will be possible soon. Low latency, one millisecond, even less than that. Even less than that, I'm saying you. High reliability, like we talk of Amazon Web Services, 99.9999% up and reliability will be over here. Energy efficiency, no need for any problems with like a 4G communication network. We have to reduce the battery life or other things. The energy reduction of the devices will be done by 90%. And of course, no backhaul congestions. Actually, MEC is a technology that uh, actually welcomes more users. It, uh, it actually becomes happy when more and more users come on the internet and they keep stressing on the internet. If you talk of the latest NVIDIA exhibitions that they have done online, please see that. You will be stunned to know that the computers and the technology that they're giving for rapid improvement of the internet for massive connectivity, it is unimaginable. I always see if anybody asks me, sir, which is the number one company for innovations according to you, I don't say any other company, I say it is NVIDIA. And I keep a close eye on NVIDIA. And after that, I keep a close eye on Nokia, what they're doing in 6G. And after that, we keep a close eye on Apple and Samsung, that what exactly they're working on new innovations and what products they need to build up for the smart users. 
So you can see these are some of the use cases and this is where you can do your research and even you can write good papers. You can see dynamic content delivery, placing content to the users. And of course, the information can be shared, utilized, whatever you want to have, AR and VR. And even I think Dr. Sam has come to our university. So our university is also doing lots of uh, research in computer vision when we are using HoloLens 2. And even I'm also ordering the Oculus Lift, uh, Rift by Facebook next month. And we want to make our own AR-based apps for doctors. How we can imagine some applications for dentals, gynecology, and of course, for general anatomy. Intensive computer assistance. Intensive. Video streaming, IoT, connected vehicles, cognitive assistance. And that is a very good area that you can perform your research that today, rather than to call on the call centers, we have the connect cognitive assistance with advanced chatbots. And this is the area where we are actually doing our lots of research that how we can add better deep learning and explainable AI with chatbots and wireless big data analytics. So of course, sensors are producing the data and we need to analyze that data in the cloud. And in that mobile computing services, we need better data analytics. So this is the MEC based AR and VR system, which I have already taken you into consideration. And of course you can see some of the places in Hue city, when we talk of like a uh, Hue palace and some other places, you can just put up your camera. You need some, uh, you can say just connectivity and just place the camera on the particular place and you will see the complete AR based reality over there. But I want that, uh, but this is my dream that even I do some research and I can work with the government that how we can add the AR based uh, systems for the tourists because Vietnam is a huge population. Uh, Vietnam is going to welcome huge population of tourists in the next two years now after the COVID pandemic. So AR and VR system will make the uh, country more advanced and more welcoming to the tourists, more uh, close to the tourists that what exactly is the culture of Vietnam and how they can understand the things. So language barrier will be long, will be almost gone. And of course, the video caching, which I've already explained to you, and autonomous vehicles and IoT, which you can see on your home. And over there, we can have the data aggregations, the IoT gateways. And over there, you can see you can see some of my papers and YouTube channel also. We have done uh, our LoRaWAN now, and we are adding up mobile edge computing based services, the APIs to our LoRaWAN. Now, LoRaWAN is automatically very fast, long range connectivity. Now, if I add the MEC over there, it becomes invincible. We can have the strongest, the fastest, the most secured, the wireless communication sensor network, which is powered with LoRaWAN and it can be deployed anywhere. So that's the thing, everybody, that uh, if uh, LoRaWAN is the engine, then MEC is like a fuel cell. It is going to power up and giving up better efficiency for everything. And this is one of the area that I would like to discuss with all of you in detail. This is called middle box based MEC deployment and how this could be very much beneficial. So you can see over there, there is a user experience. And today we all know that we like to do our work, everything, even the Bitcoin mining on mobile phones. So over there, we are connected to RANS, our cellular communication network. And after that, it has the 4G cores the MEC, the MMEs, the H HSS, the base stations, everything, and it is connected to the internet. But if we are talking to improvement, we just want to place this 4G core network and the antennas in between, we need to add the MECs. Why? Because the MEC will improve the bandwidths. And of course, there is no modification that is need to be done. Just you need to plant some APIs and our network hardware between the antennas and the 4G core network, that is the data centers, rest of the architecture will remain the same. So this will improve the deployments, the uh, streaming services like anything. And this is one of the SDN based MEC deployment in LT that you can see that how they are improving the communication to the user experience with the gateways, with the MEC platforms and how the future uh, Sophos firewalls are doing lots of things in terms of uh, traffic redirections, traffic steering, and edge computing. So this is my lab, everybody. I'm happy to inform you that uh, if I think so, you can see that. I think you can see the camera. So you can see my lab. We are having three computers over here, and uh, we are also adding up more uh, 5G towers. And uh, I'm also adding up my LoRaWAN that we are doing over here in my lab itself. 
I am the director of my lab, and this is one of the screenshots that you can see right now. So I'm having one computer of HP, one MacBook, and we have the three high quality systems with a one one terabyte RAM and 18 terabytes of storage services. And we have deployed some sensors near the beach, near, the, near Hoi An city, and we are getting the live feeds that how we can get the temperature, the humidity, and we can do the live environmental monitoring. So we need to add more things over there. Okay. And this is one of the area that you can do your research regarding how to improve the consolidated caching and cache splitting. So the 4G cellular based network can even become better and better with MECs and of course with EPCs. And this is where you can see one of the most important thing how MEC is there in 5G and 5G is you can see what is 5G it is uh, the higher data rate as compared to 4G. And of course, with 5G RAN, you can ultimate have the low ultimate bandwidth, uh, sorry, latency that is less than one millisecond, which means the backhaul network with the OVS switches will become better and better. You can see in my lab also, we put our computers, we get the sensors in the field, we get one gateway, which is connected to the 5G communication network. But with MEC, we will have better connectivity from the sensors to the gateway, gateway to the cloud and the cloud to our API services. So that is where you can perform your data analytics. You can study what exactly is going to be the forecasting. And with the power of machine learning, you can even do future prediction of temperature, what is going to happen in next Friday, what we can do. So this is one of the best areas that you can see how the UPFs are getting dist uh, distributed. And of course, the data pane from the MEC system perspective. And these are some of the most important functions of MECs in 5G, where you can write your research paper. Depends on you what area you want to do your research, whether you want to go for a local area data network based optimization, whether you want to understand the quality of service by traffic influence, you can take a scenario that, okay, we have the more than 6,000 users and they are streaming Netflix and some are facing some problems with ordinary 4G or 5G network. Now we added MECs between the antennas and the 5G core network uh, so that it could be providing better services to the users. And then you can optimize that what exactly is the bandwidth and how the users are getting better QoS. Of course, local routing over there, you, are, you can even see some of my papers with ACOs. And uh, even we are adding up more optimization techniques like particle swarms and even with dolphin acquisition. Of course, with QoS and network capability. So these are some of the challenges, some of the support functions that you can work, that you can do your research and you can find some optimization problems. And many people will ask me this question, sir, how we need to test that. So you have lots of simulation tools, like uh, you can say the most important simulation tool is called OpNet. Then we have the free tool called OmNet++. We are having NS2, NS3 simulator. We are even using MATLAB. And of course you can even uh, do it on NetSim. So these six simulators, most of them are free and you can get the libraries of MECs, cloud computing. Of course, cloud sim is also there, cloud analysis there, but depending on you, what kind of area you want to do your research, you can make the benchmarks on that, you can make the network. And of course there is Cisco Packet Tracer where you can add the MEC framework today if you want to add up into your university communication network, you can make that. So let me come towards the conclusion now. So mobile edge computing is a new way to meet the requirements of 5G application. So don't think with 5G, uh, you are going to get better speeds. No, it is not like that. The speeds will be better, but of course you need to optimize the speeds. Because suppose if you are getting 4G and you are only 10 users, the speed will be equivalent to 5G, normal 5G, it's like that. But now if I increase the user to 3000 and we don't add MEC with 5G, the speed will be even like a, like a, just a simple slight experience better than 4G. Okay, so you understand 5G will not bring the revolution that technology and the new standards and interfaces will bring the revolution. So of course, the SDN are, are basis to implement the, the 4G and 5G. And of course, many applications of 5G will require better bandwidth, better uh, latency. And uh, this is what I see the future of MEC with 5G in real time applications. So with this, I'm almost 70% complete with my lecture. And now I give you two minutes break. And after two minutes break, we will restart with the last part of my lecture in which we will understand the real time cases. Now you understand what exactly is the base of cloud edge 
you know about mobile edge computing you know about its characteristics you know about the support functions you are you have done some scenarios you know the architectures the diagrams that i've shown you and now you know the challenges that we need to add up okay but now we will only study the applications after 2 minutes so if there is any question please pop up your questions on the chat box i will be more than happy and you will get my contacts my email my whatsapp number my zello number at the end of the lecture okay uh, dr nair i mean what i was thinking is that we have come to the hour mark Sir, we just need five. Ten, sir, we just need five ten minutes because these slides are only fifteen. I would like to discuss the real time cases. Okay. Just okay. Just give me five minutes. Okay. okay let yeah, me start. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. The, the yeah. yeah but just give me. Just give me five minutes. Sir. Just five okay. minutes. Okay. Right. I don't take much time to discuss over there. I just need five minutes. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Sam, for uh, giving me extra five minutes. So now in this lecture, I will be just discussing what exactly are the real-time use cases, so that uh, we get some time for interaction and some questions. So I have already told you what exactly is MEC. You can see that it is basically a network architecture in which we enable the cloud computing and edge services in the cellular communication network. So if you ask me that, sir, how we can integrate edge computing in mobile communication network, that is MECs. so that's the reason mec you can consider it as a mobile edge computing it's a edge cloud and of course it's a multi access edge cloud computing services so this is one of the classical mobile network architecture that you can see we have the user equipment we have our radio access network towers that you can see onto your city with 4g and 5g where mobi phone and vtel is there after that they have their core network which consists of their routers the switches the firewalls everything and after that they are connecting to the application servers like we have the application server of facebook or the application server of google so this is actually known as your internet this is your mobile phone the backend this is your antennas and this is you so this is how the communication gets connected but now everybody we have the long data path so that's the problem which you can see that it is not very much acceptable but with the industry 4.0 you can see that we can add up more applications in terms of requirements for campus area network seamless activity one of the best real time applications so this is how you can improve and this is one of the application areas where i am working with two companies in vietnam one is bosch okay and the second company i cannot uh, tell you because of some uh, uh, you can say information disclosure contract between them and me so i'm working with them on iot communication network and plus one more company in india and one more company with thailand that how we can integrate mobile edge computing with their iot technology so this is one of the hybrid approach that you can see and uh, yeah so i would like to wind up the lecture now with central cloud versus edge cloud you can see there is a application and there is a general cloud computing with only computing capability storage and networking but with mobile edge computing you can add one extra layer where you can have the programming model the security and privacy model that you can see okay and uh, this is one of the uh, uh, you can say screenshot that i have taken uh, with the vodafone and uh, they have sent me the screenshot how they are adding up the mecs and how they can cover the remote areas so believe me there was a that there was a problem that everybody was saying that with 5g you need to add more antennas to the city of course you are right but if you add mecs based uh, routers and switches you be, uh, believe me you can uh, you just need one antenna for more than 15 to 20 kilometers which means if the danang city is 30 kilometers two antennas of 5g or 6g are much enough to have better coverage for the entire city for accompanying lots of people with their real time application scenarios lots of okay so the other use cases you can see in front of you i see in drones agriculture monitoring iot smart homes and of course i have given you the detailed scenario of mobile uh, with the edge computing with industry 5.0 so thank you so much for calling me this is all for uh, the lecture and uh, apmg is doing lots of apmg is doing lots of good work so here is you can see my you can see my google scholar you just search my name on uh, uh, internet on google you can see my google scholar you can see some of my papers which you can see latest papers on cloud computing and everything they are coming up you can see over here and here is my scopus you can see my citations and here is my website that you can see anandayar.com 
So now I would like to take some questions. So let me see some questions on the chat box. Okay. Okay, so there is one question from Mr. Dihan Mora, uh, Moravaka. We are setting up and more and more EM fields to get this bandwidth and what are the side effects? Of course, if you are setting up the EM fields and you are adding up more radio antennas, you are actually having the health problems because after all, they are radio frequency waves. But what I recommend you that you must start edging up with the mobile edge computing routers and servers, which are available from Cisco. Of course, they are available from Buffalo. They are even, uh, even uh, you can say Nokia is doing lots of wonderful work in MECs. So try to integrate that. So there is another question from Emma Sebir. Hi, Dr. Nayar. Thank you for the information talk. Thank you so much. My question is how to find a way against the massive ESP fast connectivity on the phones. I wonder if there is a device or way to disconnect the Wi-Fi or ESP data on the phones using the room. I'm talking more about students in a class as sometimes we see students busy with their phones. I wish there are some ways to stop the connectivity on the internet. Okay, so basically what you have to do, rather than to have this type of way, you just activate a firewall. Like if, if your uh, server is using some, uh, if you're using some Linux server or Windows server, you can just activate the, uh, the, uh, the server over there with like a squid proxy server that if the class is from nine to 10, you can just uh, uh, put the internet on the heart, like social media, YouTube could be put on heart, but if they want to use Google and other services, they could be done. So it's just like a, uh, you can say firewall or like a network monitoring setting that you can perform. Just install Linux server or Windows server. You can add some firewall and put some uh, websites on particular hard for particular time. And after the lecture is over, they can enjoy the services. Thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, of course, uh, of course, there is one question from there. Uh, all the technological innovations are fascinating and we can open up totally new future for us. Of course, you can open up the new future because you can see that metaverse has come. And even if you talk of the NVIDIA graphics cards, the today's uh, Amazon web services, because today, if you talk of at one time, we used to do Cisco, then we used to do Linux and Microsoft. Now, every day, uh, now we can just think of AWS, just put your requirements and you are up and running with the server. No need to touch anything. Even if the student is working now today, they can use the free AWS client and they can put whole of their project and they can uh, share with the users and every auto scaling can be done with the AWS itself. Very important. However, we know. Uh, However, we might not be able to see the future if our earth is too hot to be inhabitable. Would new infrastructure overload the environment? No, I don't think so. Because if you talk of Bitcoin mining, now let me tell you, actually I can speak on Bitcoin mining for the whole day. Let me tell you, if you talk of the today's Bitcoin machines, just go on YouTube, even they are not using the proper coolant services. You just have to make a motherboard and put uh, all your graphics card like NVIDIA uh, G, uh, GTX 1650 or uh, because in my lab, you can see even I'm having the lab of uh, Bitcoin mining, you can see over there, I'm using RTX 3090 graphics card in these two machines and I'm using 1650 graphics card here for Bitcoin mining. So I don't use any separate coolant or other things. It is not getting overloaded, but still in the future, uh, if, if you don't stop your uh, environmental pollutions, the earth will become inhabitable. But I don't see that because with EV vehicles, most of the pollution will be coming down. I don't see any problems in that. Okay. So we all use mobile phone applications so much during the day, some practical applications. I can talk for this everyone, but uh, this is actually the biggest answer. Of course, uh, mobile phone applications are much and I don't see the future of any laptops and desktops of the future, unless you are into like a scientist activity, you are in the lab, you need to work on that. But uh, maybe if you talk of like Huawei phones and uh, like Surface phones today, they are actually uh, putting up the computer in your hands. So of course, the future is very good. The connectivity is very good. We are working in the right direction. But let me tell you, everybody, let me tell you. If you talk as a, if I'm a, I'm a computer scientist, if you talk to me that, sir, has the revolution started? I don't say it has not even started. I see the ultimate revolution that when quantum computers will be available in the whole world and we put up the complex applications to quantum computers to solve. And then we can say that revolution actually started with optimization. Because today you add up a technology, you, uh, you don't know that how much you have optimized it. We need to optimize that so that we can have some efficient utilization of that. 
For that, we need quantum computers. Let's see the future. So with this, everybody, hope you have all enjoyed the lecture. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for inviting me. And I see more uh, lectures of mine in the future, like of Internet of Medical Things, like Laravel, research methodology, how to write papers, how to write thesis. And of course, I can give some practical lectures on cyber, on cyber security and even some practical lectures on how to make the Bitcoin mining and how to earn the money without investing a zero dollar. Even I can tell you one lecture that how to become, how to earn $1,500 without investing $0 in Bitcoin every month. No need to worry. And even you don't have to buy any hardware or mobile phone apps. You don't have to buy anything. I can do that. And of course, we can have some more lectures with regard to how we can add up some cloud computing and optimize cloud computing with Amazon and Azure, of course, with Google Cloud. So thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nair. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we have uh, a lot to learn from you. Some interesting ideas. And when you know, when you talk about money, everyone gets interested. Everyone wants to make uh, uh, $1,500 uh, without investing anything. Sir, so, I'm, uh, doing sir, I'm doing a research. Uh, I'm doing a research with three persons and even let me tell you last month, me and my team have earned $3,000 and we have not even done any mining on the computer. We have done some mining by auto scaling our applications on Amazon. We just have done it free and we have earned $3,000 without even investing $1 from our own pocket. Thank you. So uh, definitely we will be on a lookout uh and uh, we will invite you uh, again uh, to speak sure. uh, uh, in our next webinar. Not only sure. that, we also uh, uh, do seminars during uh, conferences with uh, APNIC and others, and we will be looking forward uh, to you to. Uh, yes, uh, my camera is off because I think uh, at the moment, uh, Dr. Nair is uh, sh uh, sharing the screen. Okay, no problem. I just close the screen now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so yeah, of, of course, um, we are looking forward to uh, getting you again and uh, sharing with you and uh, our our collaboration and our research network will continue as usual. And we look forward to uh, doing uh, many great things in the future. I would also like to thank uh, the participants uh, that are in attendance today. I know that uh, in uh, many countries, Western countries, uh, uh, Asia Pacific region, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, today is uh, uh, the long weekend, Easter weekend. And that, that is one of the reasons uh, many participants are not here, but uh, hopefully in time to come uh, in our next webinar, please uh, keep a lookout for our next invitation. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye.